and he gave it to his friend. Bullet. Then he suddenly got out. Stole his head. This is a case of toxic love. I will get back to the interrogation, but let me provide some context. Kelly Cochran was married to Jason Cochran. They were high school sweethearts. In 2013, Kelly Cochran eventually met Chris Regan as he was her co-worker and they started to have an affair, both of whom were in relationships at the time with their significant others. Jason, Kelly's husband, became aware of the affair and told Kelly he would forgive her so long as she invited Chris over and he could kill him. So, on October 14th, 2014, Chris comes over, has sex with Kelly and then Jason shoots him in the head and they dump his body in the woods. In fact, it is reported that Chris's dismembered body was actually fed to the neighbours during a barbecue cookout hosted by the Cochrans. Now, due to suspicions from the police regarding the whereabouts of Chris, Kelly and Jason did move to Hobart, Indiana, where on February 20th, 2016, Kelly ended up murdering Jason. According to the EMTs at the hospital, Jason died from a heroin overdose. However, when the Hobart medical examiner looked at Jason's body, they confirmed he died of asphyxiation. This led to Kelly becoming a fugitive as she fled from Hobart. Now Kelly was eventually arrested, so let's continue with this interrogation. If you do end up liking this video, please subscribe. Start, start from the beginning. He, he comes in the house. What, what happens? What happens? Where's Jason go? Jason does not there. He's not there at all, as far as you know. Well, as far as I know at that time, no. Okay. What happens then? Okay. Then what? Okay. Then what? Okay. Then what happens? Tumbled on the stairs. Okay. You asked me about his blood. Right? Mm -hmm. His blood is all over me. Okay. What happened then? Okay, a quick observation. If you look at the way she's talking, she's very calm, right? Consider two things. One, she allowed her husband to kill Chris. Not just kill him, she said, okay, let me have sex with him and you can kill him there and then. She also fed him to the neighbors. That is as deranged as it gets. I wonder what kind of mental effects that has on her because now it's as if she's in a dream world. She is shocked. She's replaying the events in her head now and her love for Chris is probably coming out. She probably misses him and that's why she killed her husband in retribution. Hang on a minute. Just stop. There's dialogue. There's dialogue between the two of you that's missing in this entire thing. What is said between the two of you immediately? Do you scream at him? Chris. Then what happens? He gave him to his head. Bullet. Then he suddenly got out. Stole his head. Okay. Then what? He dragged him to the middle of the basement. Okay, watch this movement about to come up. She's going to grab her coffee. She's going to move her head. That is a sign that she's heartbroken. I know she's wrong. I know she's a murderer, but she's heartbroken over what happened to Chris. And what did you do? I cooked dinner. What happened next? Well, something happens before you start hearing the song. Did you have to get him anything? Did he ask you to bring him anything? The extension cord. So you were down in the basement with him and he told you to get the extension cord? Yeah. And Chris is playing her dead. Did he start cutting him up before you went back upstairs? Mm -hmm. At what point do you come back down? When you come back downstairs, what do you see? He just cut his hand off or something. I, I know it's stupid, but I can't get that out of my head. There you go. Despite her committing an act so heinous, she is still distraught over what happened. She just confirmed it there. The images, 
the feelings, the memories, the blood, the hand, the sewing, the burial, everything. She remembers it all because it meant that much. <laughs> He was taunting you with that. Like how? From the stuff. From the stuff. What, what do you mean by that? He was taunting you with a... He was waving at you with his hand. He waved at you with Chris's hand? Did he say anything? What did he say? Bye-bye. I'm going upstairs. And here we are. This is the moral of the story. This is the point of the story. Jason threw it in her face. That's why she killed him. Consider the, the moment. Jason kills Chris, sews off his hand, or whatever he may use. He says to her, live with it. Look what I did to him. I, the guy who you broke, I took him away from you. She, from that moment, was seeking revenge and retribution because she held on to the love with Chris. She held on to the hate she had toward Jason. See, in her mind, she may have still had some love for Jason just before this moment, but love has a way of blinding the sharpest of minds. Sometimes we look, but we do not see. But when that love is stripped away, which is what Jason did in that moment, you see that person for who they are. You see all their flaws and all their foibles. And that's what Kelly acted on. Before I get back to the interrogation, I also want you to consider this. In terms of revenge, retribution, right? You could shoot someone, maybe even stab someone. But when it's love involved and you're that deep in injecting them with heroin, knowing they had a slow, painful death, she, as they say in England, got her rocks off to that. She deliberately used a method to kill him where he would feel it all. This is why we are in this interrogation. It is only after we've lost everything that we are free to do anything. And to her, Chris was everything. Perhaps you thought. Done what? Yeah, me go Grab the bag, he called me down to the bags when at that point he had him almost have. So describe it. What do you see? Every joint he cut. Okay. So he put him in the bag. All of them. Okay. Then what? He got the bag. What else? There's so much blood on that floor. You want me to help him with bags? There are some things that you've done in this whole deal that you did in, a, in an event to help him, okay? That you helped him to not leave evidence, okay? Or to clean up evidence. You told me that you were afraid that he would kill you and that that's why you did what he, what he asked you to do, okay? And what? What time is it now about? Between 12 and 2. Okay. And what? What happens next? He loaded the bag. We were in ice road. We didn't turn off on Mr. Chief. We kind of the hospital. Okay. And then you believe that you pick the exact spot in the dark that he goes out there and carries Chris Reagan's remains out there. So you're saying that Chris Reagan's on Katoga Trail in the general area. He he carries the bags in the woods by himself. You don't. Is that what you're telling me? Okay. And in what shape, way, shape, or form? Buried. Okay. So you believe that you have the ability to take me to an exact spot where a body is buried. Is that what you're telling me? You know, you sit back here and you you say that you're the victim and all this, but yet you you misled the investigation. You tried to as much as possible with bits and pieces of truth here and there. You know what? Why? I feel guilty. Okay. What do you feel guilty for? I didn't have a relationship with him. Okay. So this is what I'm going to say. We're going to end on this one today. Okay. One of these days, you'll tell me the truth about everything. But for today, we will end with this. We're going to do a polygraph about Chris Reagan on Saturday. Between now and Saturday, you can show me a location. So we get through the polygraph on Saturday. Then on Monday, we'll head back to Iron River. We'll go two days. 
you spend the night in a hotel there, and I'll bring you back. But we go get Chris, we take him home. In conclusion, Kelly was sentenced to life in prison for the death of Chris Regan, and then she was sentenced to a further 65 years for the death of her husband. I think this is a story of a broken heart. Why don't you guys comment, tell me what you think.